But we need to hear what I like to call the study session to report or call Monday, August 27th at uh, 5.30 p.m. Uh, first, uh, first on the agenda, does anyone have any changes to the agenda for the regular session that's coming? Uh, there is one notation note that the bikes are called line bikes and not light bikes. Uh, which is on the agenda. But other than that, if there are no uh, changes to the agenda, uh, motion to approve. Let's just keep on moving forward then. Uh, City Manager Gregor Oates. Honorable Mayor and Council Members, I know that you are terribly excited about getting into the sewer level program, but we have <laughs> one item before we get to that. I wanted to, as you know, a part of uh, the work plan for this fiscal year is starting a review of all of the boards, committees, and commissions. The first one uh, uh, will be for the traffic commission for you. Uh, we have uh, invited the uh, chair uh, to sit in on, on this uh, review. The staff has, uh, we don't have any recommended changes uh, to the existing code. What I would say uh, is that I intend to, uh, at the next council meeting, uh, to make a recommendation of the two non-voting staff members uh, to that board. Um, as you know, the uh, traffic commission is an advisory board uh, to the uh, Munich Council and also to the uh, city manager. They deal with not just traffic, but also um, parking related matters. So, uh, retain any questions that you may have. So basically, this is just making sure that we're dotting our eyes and crossing our T's and making sure that we are actually appointing these people as non voting members. That's the I will be able to attend that support. And our goal is for this day is not That is correct, yeah. Uh, I think that hopefully what we'll do is we'll move through all of the commissions just to get a better understanding of uh, probably how things should operate. You know,
residential household <coughs> discharge onto the uh, drain under the, uh, the foundation. And uh, this drain uh, goes through vents and uh, access all uh, systems by gravity discharge. Um, it uh, is generally a 6 inch uh, pipe, a uh, diameter pipe, and uh, it uh, reaches out to uh, this is the front side of the home uh, where the street is located at, uh, on the grade. And this line here that you see is the, uh, the front lawn uh, of the property. Uh, there could be a sidewalk located in this area also in, on streets where uh, there are sidewalks. Uh, as you see, the, the system functions as uh, getting rid of the discharge from the household into the uh, sewer main uh, under the street uh, in this condition. Uh, that is uh, maintained by uh, the Metropolitan St. Louis Sewer District. Everything between the, uh, the sewer main and the, uh, the house, the residence, as well as the internal plumbing systems uh, stacks and and all the plumbing connections within the residential household is uh, the, uh, the property owner's maintenance responsibility. The sewer lateral repair program um, uh, covers the uh, sections from outside of the foundation wall um, uh, where the house connection, uh, house uh, line ends and it connects to a, uh, to a different type of pipe. Uh, generally, in our area, those are the vitrified clay uh, type of pipes due to the age of the, uh, the uh, residential uh, stock in our area. Uh, so uh, the program covers from that connection all the way out to the uh, sewer main where uh, MSD's maintenance responsibility starts. The program is uh, for the residential units of uh, six units or less. Um, not for commercial, but industrial uh, areas. Uh, it was first time approved by the, by voters on April 6, 1999, and the program commenced uh, on January 1st, 2000. Uh, its uh, revenue comes from the St. Louis County real estate property tax bills in the amount of $50 uh, per year uh, per property uh, here in the University City. Uh, what's covered under the policy is uh, replacement of uh, defective lines and, uh, and the restoration works for it. Uh, when the replacement project is conducted, uh, the trench needs to be opened and uh, whatever is about it, uh, about the line uh, needs to, that is disturbed. And uh, then uh, restoration of that, uh, but in a simple manner uh, where we don't necessarily uh, replace uh, nice landscaping or bushes uh, and such features, uh, but rather uh, build the uh, great earth, backfill the earth, and grade it to its uh, original condition. Uh, what is not covered under the current policy is uh, cabling the line. Uh, this is a maintenance activity, uh, root clearing uh, within the, uh, uh, the flow area. Um, and hydro flushing that is done to uh, improve the conditions uh, within the uh, within the pipe to uh, to remove debris. Uh, in in uh, University City, uh, we're all aware of a uh, an aging infrastructure uh, that is due to the age of our. Uh, both uh, our residential building stock and, uh, and our infrastructure. And um, we, we realize that uh, the number um, is, is an, uh, it's a hit and a miss, but it's an uh, rising trend uh, in, in terms of the number of repairs that are needed in the university city. Um, the, uh, the, the, what you see on the screen is an outline of uh, of the last five years, five fiscal years of uh, expenditures uh, as for a uh, program status report. Uh, what we need to remember is that this program uh, collects uh, $570,000 of revenue in the University City. Uh, and uh, the $50 has been set now 
for at least 10 years, and uh, that's a constant uh, to work with. And as you see, our annual expenditure constantly uh, exceeds that, and uh, it is not a, in a sustainable uh, condition right now uh, because it's uh, depleted its reserves. And uh, right now, uh, the current fund balance uh, is actually what, sh what, the, what the record shows is, I think, uh, is about $80,000 in negative. Uh, but uh, we also have projects that have uh, been completed in the fiscal year 18 this year, but were not paid out of, out of that year's funds. And those are another additional $100,000 for the projects. So for a total of $180,000 for this fund to become uh, uh, solid again. Um, that's only the, the current uh, problem to solve. Um, because going forward, as you, as you see, uh, these types of expenditures I mean, this year wasn't that bad, this year was 16 in blue side. But anything that is about $570,000 is something that the university here cannot uh, sustainably deliver. Uh, we looked at fiscal year 18, what happened? Uh, there is a, uh, a good number of home sales type of uh, uh, supernatural repair program projects that. Uh, we receive as applications. These are uh, defects that have been uh, identified during the uh, home inspections. And um, this is a, uh, not, not a number that we track, uh, it's an approximate number from conversations uh, from real estate uh, representatives in our area. And uh, that's what we, uh, what we uh, estimate uh, at about 74 uh, repairs that were uh, done in fiscal year 18 that were initiated uh, by home sales. Um, now, the, down here we have an analysis, a little further analysis of the fiscal year 18 that says home sales that are also emergencies in London. So, uh, home sales are a reason why we have repairs, but they are not just because they are home sales. Um, as we see here, a lot of them, at least in the last fiscal year, were emergencies. Emergencies are what we define as um, when, when the conditions uh, on the surface of where the pipe is, it causes a cave-in uh, type of condition on the surface. So it needs to be fixed in an emergency manner. Uh, this either being on the uh, private property or the public right away, this is, an, uh, this is a hazardous condition. Um, the, uh, these types of emergencies can also cause, because of the infiltration into the pipe uh, from its openings, uh, blockage of the pipe, and so the, uh, the residence then is not draining anymore, and, or it's slow draining. Um, another emergency uh, is uh, when there's exfiltration from the pipe, uh, and so the effluent leaves the pipe and goes into the nature, uh, that's a gap uh, related hazard that we need to fix. Um, we, have, we had in fiscal year 18 other emergencies that were not home sales. Uh, there were 93 of those. Uh, and we had other repairs uh, that just uh, came to us because uh, the residence was uh, either, uh, uh, the, 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 the property owner was either doing maintenance and the, the condition was observed and so they uh, decided to apply for a project, uh, or they were observing that they were experiencing some uh, slow flow, and so they, uh, they had it investigated and it became a, a project. How uh, uh, projects come to us is uh, the applications are filled out by uh, the property owners, and um, a, uh, with also with a video inspection record of uh, the conditions within the pipe. Uh, we then, when we receive applications, we receive the video together with it. And the video uh, is about a 200 to 300 dollar cost, uh, which is borne by the uh, homeowner, the applicant in this case. And uh, that helps us with our evaluation of uh, 
the condition so uh, we can uh, identify whether it's qualified or not. And then uh, there are certain things about the tax um, record. Uh, the, the taxes uh, should uh, have been paid by the, uh, the uh, property for the property to be eligible for uh, the program. And uh, so uh, that, 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 that is the first step in the uh, process of the prepared uh, project. Okay. Would you like to have questions at the end or can council to ask if we have I'm just quick one is curious about the presentation on the homes have also also is that counted under is that counted under emergency repairs or homes? these are uh, emergency uh, no uh, these are home sales counted only on the home sales. Okay. So it's already after the recovery. Uh, the next step in our uh, process is that we uh, write the specifications for the uh, for the repair uh, project and then send it out for uh, for bids. Uh, we aim for uh, receiving at least three bids uh, on these projects so that uh, we can compare and contrast. And then uh, low bidder is what we uh, normally award to uh, uh, low, lowest responsible bidder is. Uh, is our award, uh, who our award is being up to, and that the project uh, starts with the uh, commitment of the property owner to uh, their share of the cost that is 20% on the rupture of the policy. And then that the uh, contractor gets in touch with the property owner and the project starts. If we switch back to the video, each quarter we bid up. Here, if we switch back, I'm just not right. uh, we are now doing uh, individual bids on each project, and so every time we receive an application, it goes out for bids. Uh, each one is a separate bidding process. And we change that when? Uh, we never, uh, 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 we, we did a few uh, of those bundle contracts. The last one that we discussed with the uh, uh, council was uh, was not a net. Uh, uh, cost uh, savings advantage over individual bidding it, and so we never enacted that contract. So uh, we've been doing. I think that was in uh, that was in 2017, March of 2017, February or March of 2017. And uh, although we had a contract that bid uh, for the bundle contract, we never uh, executed that contract. So we kept doing it individually. And does the, 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 the bundle provider? I'm just curious now, or just as a business uh, right. opportunity, is that the No, uh, we uh, talked to them, uh, they didn't have any claims, uh, any further claims, and uh, so they made the job, but the, uh, the, the agency in this case never awarded the job to them. And they, and they don't do any of the individual work? They do, they, yeah, they participate in the individual work. Yes. Jobs were uh, done and paid for. Uh, the jobs have been done, uh, but they have not been paid for, and uh, that's why we are on the uh, back wall uh, number uh, list here. Uh, so uh, that uh, that uh, of course uh, it constitutes a portion of our, um, uh, our defective uh, deficient budget here. Um, as uh, we just discussed, we had the bundle contract before. Uh, we uh, used bundle contracts before, um, 
and it's pricing, uh, sorry about the, the illegible document here, uh, but it just uh, shows us uh, how we do this. It's a unit price as a sign to each job. Uh, in the sewer lateral repair program, it's rather a, uh, uh, an unusual uh, way of doing this. We can start with cities like Maryland Heights uh, to collect their thoughts and experience about how they do it. Uh, this is how they approach it. Uh, this, is to, this, this is, of course, generalizing what we do in a certain year. Uh, there's no guarantee that these jobs are all, uh, would all be in these classes because what is uh, shown on this bid record, the bid, the itemized bid record is, for example, if the excavation that is done is between 8 feet and 12 feet, it's this price. If it is between uh, 12 feet and 15 feet, it's this price. Uh, there are some assigned quantities to it to come up with a uh, total bid price and an award price. Uh, it may change throughout the year because we really don't know what the application will receive. Uh, but overall, when we compare its cost to individually bidding these projects, the cost of the bundle contract uh, exceeded uh, the individual uh, bidding prices. Um, you will, some of you will sort of remember that uh, in uh, April of 2015, uh, our council uh, enacted a, uh, a uh, instead of a 90 10 split between the cities and the homeowners' portions uh, that they were responsible for. This is again after the video and the uh, initial investigation is paid for by the homeowner. Uh, the uh, program, uh, due to similar budgetary issues, then uh, Change, change the split to an 80-20 and uh, since April of 2015, the 80-20 uh, split uh, has been implemented. Um, the, the other, another improvement method that we uh, utilize is, uh, as you, uh, some of you are also aware, uh, there are trenchless methods in doing uh, sewer water repairs uh, so that uh, the, the traditional way of doing this by uh, the usage of uh, construction of human and destruction of the surface is not uh, the case. Uh, this is called the cure in place uh, pipe or pipe bursting methods. Uh, these methods are, uh, they uh, provide cost savings, uh, but when they are uh, applicable, uh, so they are not always applicable uh, to the cases such as uh, pipelining. Uh, cure in place pipe is also referred to as pipelining. Uh, pipelining cannot be done when there's a major offset type of situation in the pipe because the, the pipe that is there is called the host pipe uh, that needs to be in a reliable condition for the line to, uh, to be inserted in it and properly adhere to it. And uh, pipe bursting uh, has, uh, similarly has its uh, limitations. Uh, uh, but uh, just for a comparison of the costs, a uh, cure in place piping costs us a uh, about a hundred dollars uh, per foot, uh, as compared to tr with traditional methods, we may go up to uh, three hundred dollars a foot uh, for uh, for these repairs. Uh, so they are more expensive. So these are some uh, ideas as our recommendations, uh, staff recommendations to our city manager uh, to. Uh, to see if the, if the program can be uh, put back on track uh, by making these changes. Uh, Cross-sharing uh, adjustments uh, as, done, as, as it was done in 2015 is uh, certainly another uh, possibility now for a 70-30 split. Uh, but the 70-30 split, uh, as you uh, see here, still doesn't do it uh, because the annual city expense uh, goes down to an average of seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which still is higher than our budget of five hundred and seventy thousand dollars. This increases the homeowner copay to an average of twelve hundred dollars from what it is now uh, uh, is eight hundred dollars. If the cost sharing is adjusted to a fifty-fifty split, that is a major uh, departure, of, uh, well, major uh, difference to what we are having now as eighty twenty. Uh, the, uh, the city expenses are controlled uh, within the budget, uh, but the homeowner uh, co pay uh, goes uh, much higher uh, to a $2,000 uh, uh, level. Uh, we have a, a, a uh, service by, uh, well, this is more like a product uh, proposed by the uh, National League of Cities. Uh, it's called a service line insurance program. 
Uh, it covers uh, up to $8,500 in repair costs uh, with no call, no call payment. Uh, but it requires an additional annual cost of $87 per member household. So it's like a voluntary program and the, uh, our property owners uh, would need to sign up for this program. It's like an insurance for uh, the sewer lateral. And so uh, the, uh, the coverage is not uh, so bad uh, because we looked back at our, how much it costs total, for total cost for repairs. Uh, this covers uh, about almost 90% of the repair charges in the Mississippi, $8,500. Um, but uh, the program needs to be uh, advertised to publicize with our constituents, uh, with our residents. And, um, and the residents will need to sign up for it and pay their, uh, pay their share uh, of, of the cost. Uh, we here combine this uh, in our solution options with a 70 30 split uh, to show uh, what the uh, expenses would still be uh, to the city's program with this program because the city's sewer lateral repair program will, of course, continue because that's a that's the law. And, uh, but if the National Media City's service line insurance program is added to the mix, then the uh, city's uh, sewer data repair program will receive less uh, of a load uh, from uh, all these uh, repairs. However, that all depends on the participation of the program, which is voluntary. And so, in a way, uh, I'd like to uh, make sure that we understand that the National Media City service line insurance program does not depend on the 730 cost split or any, uh, any cost share split uh, um, schemes uh, in this sense that it, it, it can be done individually even with the current 80 20 uh, cost share split now. It's just a matter of National League of Cities approached us uh, about this, and it's just a matter of getting our city approval to them for them to be able to uh, market their program in, in our uh, city here. They uh, do it in Sunset Hills, they do it in some. Um, I think the Lake St. Louis, uh, some areas here, uh, some cities in our area, as well as uh, other cities nationwide. And so there are examples of it. The rest of these figures are uh, the 70 30 cost share split, uh, pretty much estimated average city expense of $435,000. This pretty much assumes no uh, participation in the program, any participation, I mean, the National Media Cities program, any participation. In the National League of Cities service line insurance program reduce this cost. And, uh, and uh, also, the city's service, city's sewer lateral repair program can be used in conjunction with the National League of Cities program because if the repair costs exceed $8,500, then those customers can still come to our program and apply it to our program. Uh, another uh, solution option. Uh, that we've discussed, uh, our city manager discussed uh, also, has been uh, the, the, a revision of the qualification criteria. The current criteria, uh, uh, it talks about the defective condition. Uh, a defective condition is uh, uh, significantly broken, it's a line of set cracked. Uh, even uh, there's a clause in our uh, policy that talks about even if these uh, uh, these uh, conditions can be foreseen now by looking at that video record that they can occur in the next three years, the uh, program, uh, the, the, the repair is eligible for, uh, for coverage. So it's a little subjective uh, and a little broad. And uh, a proposed criteria is, uh, this is what CSA goals uses, uh, defective qualified, uh, the, the, uh, the, the repair is qualified when there is severe damage that is causing cables in the public right of way or back up in the home. Uh, what is excluded from this is cables in the private property, which uh, to us can still qualify because it's a hazardous condition in the private property. And, uh, but this, if a criteria like this is applied to our selection now, uh, we can reduce those number of applications and uh, therefore the cost. Well, I just had a 
couple of questions, and that is, one is, I see that we have this broken down by you know, home sale repair, emergency repairs, but what's the board breakdown for you know, the uh, repairs that are going on? Is it, is it kept that way at all? It is not, but we can sort of derive that information from the uh, our addresses. Okay. All right. And, uh, and then the other question I have is, um, it would be nice if you had pictures of some of the work that would be done. But, um, let's see. But the question that I have is going back to restoration work. What's our standard for rest rest in restoration with contractors? When you say restoration, and I understand that we don't do landscaping, I understand that. But do we have a standard of, of what was there and then the story back to what was there, or is that left up to the contract? Uh, right, no, uh, it is not. And uh, the restoration uh, by uh, sewer uh, contractors, right, drain layers of service features uh, is uh, quite a hit and a miss uh, as for standards for this type of program. That's why our restoration standards are really minimal. Uh, minimal meaning uh, backfilling um, and uh, any type of uh, surface uh, hard features like pavement uh, in installation uh, to, to match what existed uh, later before. And, uh, so uh, landscaping, what we, what we run into with these contractors is that they, they are not good landscapers or they are not good uh, concrete papers. Right, and that, that, that leads to that's the other part of my question is because, you know, you had contractors that come in and uh, a lot of the, the sidewalk and the, the land in front of people's houses are a tan concrete, I guess I would say. But then when they replace it, they put in the light concrete. And, you know, the sort of and that's not, you know what I mean? That's why I'm asking, what, is that really left up to the contractor or do we? Required to restore no, minimal requirements to match what was there before, uh, and, and uh, this is what we do in our public right away as well. If there is aged concrete there, there are certain ways to be able to make a new concrete aged looking, like washing the surface. And uh, so those would still be required under this project. I mean, at the locations that it's not done, those have to be rectified and corrected. And uh, one is uh, 6917. Yeah. Uh, we're currently working on it on that contract. There still owes us uh, that resolution. But we also ran into uh, defective uh, restoration in the public right away on other streets. And for that, what we did was we took the, that portion out of the scope of the original contract and collected those uh, items together, bundled them up as a to contract together, and, uh, and uh, hired a Specialized contractor for that type of purpose for uh, getting that part done. All right, and the last one I'll say about that is you know, I've got neighbors that are actually stating that you know, after the work was done, before the work was done, they never had water cooling in front of their house. And now, after the work, now they have a big pool of water. That's a great, right, a great standard. Uh, that is also in our requirements as for how the uh, trench needs to be backfilled and after what, what stage. Needs to be refilled, and so because there's consolidation that occurs in this type of thing. Thank you. So, what proportion, because we're looking for the change in criteria, what proportion of the uh, applications are actually uh, have problems in the building right away, and, and conversely, how many have problems in the lawn? Uh, in the homeowner's law. Uh, we just uh, very quickly uh, looked at those numbers when we proposed this criteria. Uh, if uh, I don't have the exact numbers for uh, those areas specifically, but if we can apply a criteria like this, likely we can reduce the number of applications uh, by about 50% uh, in university city. So uh, that means that uh, small cracks within the pipe. Uh, small set conditions, uh, those uh, are not qualified anymore because they uh, almost uh, never uh, cause a major flow issue or key means. Uh, or so, um, I mean, certainly the difference between 
the number of applications that we receive, but if we structure it so that we pay 100%, then you would receive a benefit when your school uh, collapses. Um, so that is what we were looking at, but I wanted to have this discussion to, to determine where is the bearing council on this issue? Do you want something very stringent or do you want something Strengthen what would be there for protection uh, if you need it, or are you doing something different? Uh, thank you. Uh, I have used this program a couple of times and uh, also working on her house in this building. I have a question similar to the council and some others. Do, do we have a, any kind of breakdown of how many? Uh, what the average cost is, what, how many were 2,000, how many were 3,000, how many were 8,000, that type of thing. Yeah, I do have it, I do have it with me, uh, but it's in our uh, we keep the program information for repair, uh, uh, how much it costs, uh, because the repair cost is not only the original cost, but there is also there can be change over the same once the lines open and the other defects that are found. And so we have all that information that we can uh, provide. And my follow-up to that is, uh, it doesn't, for all of us that live in New City, it doesn't matter whether we live in a, 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 a small lot, in a small house, or in a large house on an acre, but we all pay the same amount. Um, as we looked at and considered um, providing a Essentially, an equal amount of coverage because there's an equal amount of money in the program, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's in the way of maybe uh, doing it in a chat type of manner. That's what it's about, yeah. Right, and our neighboring city, the city of Clayton, uh, implements their program uh, in that fashion. Uh, there is an maximum uh, amount of utilization by the uh, program applicants. Uh, well, uh, the city uh, paid into it, uh, and uh, so that's it. The uh, remaining cost is borne by the property owner. Okay. Um, I just do. Do you have an opinion on that at this point? Uh, that's another method uh, that can be utilized. Uh, uh, I need to go back and check uh, how how that corresponds in terms of uh, seventy thirty or a fifty fifty split. Uh, and come up with that as another uh, solution and uh, option. A couple of questions I have for us. Uh, since uh, Mr. Hales mentioned it, I used to get it How many people have any issues with that one? Okay, so yeah, I, I had this for back and forth with it, so I appreciate the program immensely. So just make sure that's it. The other thing, one question that we're talking about is to the mobile to uh, to go through the recording on a $50 fee, is there, is there, is there a mechanism to increase that fee or not? $50 is going to be the hottest that right. we can. But well, there's a price that we can't go any further because of uh, state law. So there's a little bit of legislation uh, hasn't changed in over 15 years. So, so there's a it's a, yeah, it has to be approved. It was approved by the voters. Uh, it's, uh, and so to increase it, you, one, you would need legislative authority to voters to approve it. I don't know. And then the cap in our neighboring community, you're talking about they have a cap of you know, 3,000. 3,000. I do mean, think that for, uh, I think we're, I think, I don't know if I'm speaker, but I think we're going to be the program to Change. I think we're I think we're open to any number of things. I think we're trying to come up with what is the best solution for all of our residents as much as possible. Uh, the only part I'm a little worried about the catastrophic is I think our citizens are used to those. That's number one. And number two, we're also going to defer an awful lot of maintenance to that at some point that is going to come back and haunt us. I worry. And I realize that was the way the program was initiated, but we sort of Mature the program into something much different than that, and we get a number of, um, I may be wrong, but I was given with residents who feel that we 
that in that case, 570,000 dollars, a 10% cut uh, is uh, uh, used by the county to administer the program uh, for us. Uh, because you know what the county has is a sewer lot to repair program office. It's not the public works department, it's a specific office that does this day in, day out, very much. Uh, but, uh, you know, either, either fashion we do it, uh, I think we can, uh, we can propose the options. Let's take a quick break and we'll start the opening session at 6.30. Please take your microphone.